Welcome back everybody to Desktop Inventions. Now that was a sneak peek at part three of upgrading our Ender 3 V2. Now if you're interested to learn more details, grab a beverage, stick around, because we're gonna go through it in this video. So let's get to the upgrades. Okay, before we get into the major changes, gonna go over a few addendums since the last video. So previously I put this DC converter in here to regulate the voltage to these two fans. And I do have these two 12 volt fans hooked in series, so the 24 volt input will be split to 12 volts. So the DC converter is not really needed unless I want to turn down and adjust that more, but it turns out that's really unnecessary. So we're just going to desolder that DC converter and just hook the wires back up directly and get rid of that ugly eyesore once and for all. So now to address the second issue from the previous video. Um, with these extra large fans on here, when the gantry moves all the way to the left, it contacts here and does not hit this switch. I mentioned there's a couple options for this. You could use a 4010 fan here instead of a 4020. At the time of the video, I opted to just add some hot glue on here, which held up and worked fine, but it's really not professional. So since then, I designed this tiny little cube part that just slides right on here and addresses this issue. There we go, now we can see it uh, contacts the switch now and does not run into the stepper motor here. So now onto the first improvement today, we'll be addressing these cables. So since the last video, this is probably the thing that's bugged me most is just how loose and messy these cables are and they're kind of catching on each other, making noise. So I printed out some cable chains designed by Johnny Whiskey and we're gonna get those installed and see how they work. So we'll start at the heated bed here. There's a black clip you'll have to remove. Then you can start by putting this first clip on the top. And next you can start installing the cable chains one at a time or several together. So with these cable chain covers, there's this base part and there's a top that snaps on. So we've got all these base parts installed and I'm gonna take these top pieces and start snapping them on so that the cable cannot fall out the bottom like that. And here we are snapping these clips on one by one. Make sure you print these out in the correct orientation, standing upright, or they will break on you. Now, starting at the top here, there is this piece that's meant to uh, mount on there. So we'll see if we can get this to fit. Since these cable chains were probably designed for the Ender 3, the Ender 3 maybe didn't have these extra wire sleeves on there, but now there's no way this larger wire sleeve can fit in this little opening here. So for now, we're gonna skip this part and probably use a, a zip tie temporarily. Helpful tip, I found it easiest to assemble these cable chains by laying them flat onto the table and then snapping them together. Also note this cable chain cannot bend very tight in this direction, but in the other direction where the opening is, it can bend very tight. So if your cables are bending this way, you should install them uh, accordingly. And here I'm working on the cable for the extruder head. I found it easiest to assemble these cable chains all together in one piece like this. And once those are on, again, just snap on those covers one by one and you'll be on your way. Here we are in the back of the printer again. I got this bracket printed out that's supposed to mount these two cables at the base here, base of the printer. Okay, so we'll get the printer propped up, remove the power cable and remove the end cap. And then this bracket here is just intended to slide in the back of this extrusion here. And first we'll attach the cable for the heated bed. We're going to make it run around the side here in order to avoid getting in the way of the power switch there. Looks like I installed a few too many links, so I'll take those off and then we'll pop this end right into this mounting bracket. And then double check to make sure everything's moving smoothly and there's no hangups. And for the other cable, we're also going to go around the side and wrap that around. So we'll get that snapped into the mounting bracket here. Now we'll raise the gantry up, make sure it's smooth and nothing's catching. Then we'll lower it back down and make sure everything returns. We still have to mount the end of this cable chain to this bracket here and make another cable chain for the hot end. But we'll come back to that in a little bit. Another helpful tip is I would recommend printing several extra of these cable chain brackets. They're pretty easy to break when installing, so a few extra won't hurt. And now for the next upgrade, I've 3D printed this bracket, which is going to allow me to convert the stock parts here to a direct drive setup. So we're gonna take this extruder motor and mount it above the hot end here. And with the direct drive upgrade, it's going to allow us to be able to print flexible parts with flexible material, as well as allow us to use lower retraction settings to help with part stringing. 
And first step, we'll disconnect the power and remove the filament spool. Then next, we'll turn our attention to the filament guide on top. Just a few bolts and that extruder motor will drop out the bottom. Don't forget to unplug the wire, and then you can take the assembly off the top. And next, we'll start to disassemble the hot end. You can take the fan off of the front first with four screws. Next, we'll take off the two bolts for the heatsink, and then that whole assembly will pop off of the rail there. Then I chose to disassemble and replace the PTFE tube. You don't have to do that for this upgrade, but mine was pretty old and had never been replaced, so I decided to replace that here. So after installing a fresh PTFE tube and reassembling the heat block, the next step was to install the mounting bracket onto the gantry. I had to remove the two roller wheels to do this, but after that the bracket slid into place, then you can return the wheels and tighten the nuts. Now to mount the stepper motor and the filament feeder directly onto the moving part of the carriage. Next was measuring and cutting the shorter length of the PTFE tube. Install the two bolts to secure the hot end into place. Return the spring and the linkage for the filament guide on the side. Then replace the fan and the fan cover with four screws and the hot end is now fully assembled. All right, now I've got the direct drive hooked up and working. I even print out, printed out a small test cube just to make sure things are working. Looks good enough for now. So the next thing we have to tackle is the wires. So for this extruder motor, I just use the stock wire and it is not long enough. You can see as this goes over, it's really pulling on that. So to fix this, we'll use an extra wire harness I had lying around. We're going to solder that onto the original harness to make it longer. And that'll be a good segue to go back and finish the cable chain that we started. Now I've got a new bracket printed out with our extruder motor out of the way so we can mount this cable chain directly to that bracket. And we'll add a cable tie to secure the wires to the bracket. Now with the longer extruder motor wire, the wires can follow the same path and we can put them into a new cable chain. And now we can just sit back as this cable chain magically assembles itself. Alright, now this upgrade with the cable chain holder is finished. Um, works pretty well, sliding back and forth. But what doesn't work well is the spool holder mounted on the side here. So this is kind of an awkward angle feeding in like this. So we're going to revert a little bit back to the original design and move this spool up top here so it feeds directly into this direct drive as well as saves us some space on the side here. We won't need the side mounted spool holder anymore. So I'm going to go ahead and design a holder for this. So here's the brackets printed out. Very simple, just two brackets and four wheels. These wheels will slip into place and we'll assemble those with some M5 bolts. Then we'll go ahead and tighten those with two nuts so the nuts are locked and cannot fall off, but the wheel can still freely spin. Then we'll just double check to make sure both wheels are freely spinning. Next, to install the brackets, we just simply slide these onto the extrusion profile. Very simple. Then we can assemble on the second bracket Then pick your spool and set the spacing so it matches the spool. These brackets can also be easily adjusted for bigger or smaller spool sizes. And here's a shot of that spool holder rolling so smoothly during a print. And finally, we can get rid of this side bracket. We won't be needing that anymore. And for the next upgrade, we're going to be installing a light bar that shines down onto the platform to help with bed leveling and seeing the part better. So I found these super bright LED strips that we're going to use for this upgrade. So I spent a fair amount of time trying to design a 3D printed bracket to mount this light bar underneath here. But in the end, I found out that the best bracket is no bracket, and actually I can just install these LED strips directly into the extrusion itself. But is this safe with those electrical contacts exposed? So let's get the multimeter to check. So checking resistance here, and when I put these onto the extrusion, we are not getting any connection since they are painted with this black anodize. So it should be safe, but to be double sure, let's wrap this LED strip and some electrical tape to cover up these exposed connections. Now to install this light strip, we'll take out the two bolts in the top of the frame here. Then we can slide in the insulated LED light strip. Then you can see it on the bottom edge there. We can move the wires out of the way and reinstall the bolts here for the frame. Now to clean up the messy wires at the bottom, we can actually hide them under our extrusion slot covers, so those will come in handy. We can slide those in the extrusion groove and then just slide the slot covers back over. Repeat that on both sides to keep it clean and hidden from view. Now for the wires on the side of the frame, it's very important we get these tucked away because the rollers for the z-axis will go over this frame area, so we'll use some glue to get those tucked away. Now we can install a simple switch to activate our light, and this will be located on the front end of the 3D printer. And I printed out a simple cover that this switch just presses into. 
We can see the power wires are running through the frame to the back of the printer. If you've noticed, this cover has cutouts for two switches on it. I'm currently using one, but if you have some ideas for a second use, put it in the comment section below. And now to power these LED strips, they are 12 volts and our power supply is 24 volts, so we'll be using this DC converter to step down that voltage. As a side note, I found out you can get these light strips in 24 volts, so if you do that, you can skip this part about the DC converter. And then under the 3D printer, we'll be mounting this DC converter next to our upgraded power supply, be utilizing the same bolt that we use for that. So let's get that DC converter screwed down into place, and then we can return the strap bracket that holds the power supply into place. And finally, we can connect the input wires to the power supply to finally give power to our whole light bar solution. Tidy up the wires here, and here's what everything looks like, finished and installed. So now let's see the light effect of this new light switch. And this is adjustable, so I can make it brighter or dimmer if I want by adjusting the DC converter. And the next upgrade is this double-coated PEI sheet from BQ. It's easily detachable from the magnetic base, and it's thin and flexible, so you can get your parts off of it easily. And we'll be using this to replace the stock glass bed. And to remove this bed, we can start by taking off the clips, one in the front and one in the rear, and then we can take off the stock glass bed. And now let's do a quick weight comparison. A lighter bed is better for printing at faster speeds. So the stock bed is about 540 grams. And putting this new bed with PEI coating on the scale, we can see it's about 340 grams, so about 200 grams lighter. We'll do a quick cleaning with some alcohol before we install the new magnetic cover with adhesive backing. Installing this magnetic sheet is pretty straightforward. Just pick one edge of the sheet and start to peel back the adhesive backing. Then go ahead and align that exposed edge with the printer bed, and then use something flat to iron out the air bubbles while pulling back the rest of the adhesive backing. Keep slowly continuing with this process, and before you know it, you'll have the entire magnetic sheet installed. And for the final step, just take the PEI steel sheet and lay it onto the bed, and it will suck down flat from the magnetic force. All right, let's see this PEI sheet in action. Here's an armadillo lizard print. Just like that. Easy as can be. Also a nice benefit to the PEI sheet, on the left you can see this texture which helps hide the layer lines, and on the right, using a normal glass bed, it's more easy to see the layer lines. And finally, as an honorable mention, is a place to put your extra tools so you can free up your drawer for more important space. So here is a 3D printed tool hanger to organize your tools. This one is super easy to install, just pull off the end cap, and this can slide right onto the extrusion. Then there's a place for all your stock Ender 3 tools, and then some. So now I've got room in our drawer for much more interesting items, but we'll get to those at a later upgrade. And until then, if you've enjoyed this video, leave a like or comment down below, and we'll see you next time at Desktop Inventions.